is the Bible sexist? Oh, good. Depending on how you read it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's some passages absolutely do sound sexist, but, and this is something I've really struggled with as a woman, but um, as I've uh, done the work and looked into these things more, I've come to find that um, the Bible validates and edifies women more than any other religious work I've ever read in my life. Um, just the way that Jesus spoke to women at a time when women were treated like dirt. Um, even the fact that, you know, some people will, will tell you that God is sort of embarrassed of the feminine or he's embarrassed of, of um, women in some way. But the very first word that he uses to describe himself in Genesis is actually a feminine root Hebrew word. It's the word for a, a mother bird who broods over her eggs when it says the spirit of God was hovering over the waters in that beautiful image of creation. Um, that's actually a feminine word. And, and also Jesus wasn't afraid to liken himself to something feminine. He, he, one time he cried out, Oh, Jerusalem, Oh, Jerusalem, how I would love to gather you back to myself as a mother hen gathers her chicks in, but you weren't willing. And there again, he's comparing himself um, to something feminine. So I don't think that, that God is embarrassed of um, the female in any way, shape or form. I don't think that um, being, being a woman is, um, is bad or worse than being a man. I don't think that it's being better than, a, better than a man or worse than a man. We are equal, right? As Paul says, now there's no slave, there's no free, there's no man, there's no woman. We're all in Christ. We're all created in Christ and we're becoming these new creations by the power of the Holy Spirit. So um, yeah, that's just some preliminary thoughts. Ivy, I'm sure you can add a lot more to that. I mean, this is another one that we both do talks on uh, and for good reason. And so I, Sandra's so right. Um, I, I guess my instinct is actually to tackle this from a slightly different angle and to say first that, um, so when we hear, we are impatient with our interpretation. And I think oftentimes now we are not willing to come to a text that was written 3000 years ago and actually learn what it meant rather than what I think it said. And so if you come to the Bible with your 2019 glasses on, 2020 glasses on, you're going to be very concerned by some of the things you read. Yeah. So what we have to do is learn the wisdom and learn the muscle memory of figuring out what's actually happening in each passage. So there are awful things that happen in the Bible to men and to women that the Bible does not condone. And the fact the Bible is describing them to show you the repercussions of a bad choice. So it is condemning that bad action, just like you would condemn it. But then we also get into sections like, let's say, in the New Testament, we're talking about um, how people are supposed to live together in the church. And there's some conversations about gender in there of what about women and what about men and how do they live together and how does that work? Um, and the big question in those conversations is always, well, how much of that was just the culture? And when we use that phrase, I think we need to learn how to be careful because I think we tend to want to read whatever we want to see into a passage. And so we have to protect against that no matter what our position is. But if the temptation is to say, well, that was just their culture, so none of it applies to me, I think we run the risk of ignoring some kind of universal central idea that might actually very well apply to us if we can understand what it is. But then there's a temptation to say that, well, no, none of that's cultural. We have to obey this exactly as it's written word for word. Okay, so we need to be aware of that. And usually people get burnt out and tired and exhausted by this conversation because it's a lot of work to do the study. And part of the reason that can be so exhausting is because I think quite a lot of us have been in women, quite a lot of us women have been in church environments that don't encourage you to do that work yourself. They tell you what they think it says. And oftentimes, if you end up in a church environment that as a woman discourages you from study or from hard theological thinking or for taking initiative for your own spiritual life, I'm not saying this is all churches, but if you end up in an environment like that, it can make it doubly hard to do the work. And I think that that's a shame that Christians leaders have to answer to the Lord for. I think that's one of those sins that Jesus died for is this kind of thing. 
there is grace and forgiveness for that, but that doesn't make it okay. It's still a wrong thing to do. And so I think that the way that we, as, as a woman, you are created by God and scripture tells us that you were expressly made with gifts that were meant to be used for God to honor God in his kingdom. And he is the first person you have to answer to. So at the end of your life, you're going to be answering to Jesus for the things that he gave you to do. So I hope that's an encouragement to you, but I know that that's also a challenge because I know that there's some of you probably listening to this who feel a pull or a calling into something that you don't feel is supported by your church. And you don't quite know what scripture says about it. You're not sure you need help. Um, You need to find people that you trust. Talk to Simon, talk to a parent, talk to somebody in your life to actually start getting into that for yourself because your conscience and the Holy Spirit need to work that out together. And there is so much life-giving, rich, beautiful stuff there in store for you. So please don't be discouraged. Sandra and I both um, have gone through this and will continue to go through this, I think, for our whole lives. But just speaking for myself personally, the more work I've done on this, the more affirmed I am that God made me as a woman for a reason. And I'm blessed by it. And it's a gift. And I don't think God gave me any gifts that I was not intended to use fully for his glory. But the more you lean into him, the more confidence you'll gain there. So keep it up. I know it's hard, but don't give up.